Okay, next we're going to move on to where businesses can get money from. In other words, sources of finance. This finance might be used to start the business or for expansion. What's really important with this topic is to remember that different sources of finance are suitable for different types of businesses or in different situations. Your exam case study will give you information that'll help you decide which sources of finance should be used. Remember, the examiner will be looking for realistic ideas. Here are the sources of finance we're going to discuss. So sources, as you can see, can be internal or external. If we look here at internal, you can see a firm can gain finance from profit, working capital or sale of assets. The alternative is external finance, which can either be short term or long term. If it's short term, finance can come from an overdraft, a loan, trade credit or debt factoring. If it's longer term finance that's needed, it can be share capital or loan capital. Loan capital includes mortgages, debentures or venture capital. Let's have a look at these sources in more detail before we have a go at some exam questions. We'll start with the internal sources of finance. Profit is the most common form of finance used by businesses as they won't have to pay anyone else to use this money. But don't forget that shareholders may want profit to be used for their dividends rather than being reinvested. If a firm can't use profit, it could sell off an unused asset and gain finance this way. Obviously, this depends on whether the business has any unused assets to sell off. The last internal way of raising finance is through working capital. If a firm can improve its working capital, it can provide a source of finance. It could do this by trying to get back any money owed to it, or cutting credit terms, so that at any one time it should be owed less money. The firm could also pay its own suppliers later, but these actions may well upset a firm's customers and suppliers, and lead to them not wanting to do business with them. Another way to free up money would be to have less tied up in stock, but again there could be a drawback, because a firm wants to make sure it can meet sudden increases in orders. Really there are pros and cons of all sources of finance, and it's important that you try and point these out to the examiner, as this will help you get analysis marks. You'll get application marks as well if you're basing any suggestions on the type of business in the case study. So, we've looked at internal sources, but if enough can't be raised, a business will have to use external sources. Now these can be divided between short-term and long-term sources. Which a business opts for depends on its circumstances. For example, how much money they need and how much they're prepared to pay for it. An overdraft is really a common short-term option and is useful because it can be arranged quickly, but it won't give the business large sums of money and interest will be charged on the overdraft. A loan might be better if the business needs more finance because a set amount can be borrowed from the bank and pay back regularly with agreed interest charges. Debt factoring could also be used as a source of finance. It's when a business who's owed money decides to sell the debts to another firm. Now this firm will give them the value of the debt minus their admin fee. So the business selling the debt ends up with their money sooner than if they'd waited for their debtors to pay them. The downside is that they won't get the full amount back as they've had to pay the factor, the admin charge. Finally, for short-term finance, you can use trade credit. Now, this is when you pay your creditors, in other words, people you owe money to, as late as possible. For example, your supplier might give you 90 days to pay. This can help raise finance without paying any interest on it. But consider how a supplier would view this. As it's part of working capital, it can be classed as an internal source of finance, or on its own, it's an external source. Let's move on to long-term sources. Larger amounts of money tend to come from this source and can be either share capital or loan capital. Share capital can be raised in limited companies, which can sell shares to the public to raise finance. In return, those buying the shares get what's called a dividend, which is a share of the firm's profit. The problem for shareholders is that they won't necessarily get paid a dividend 
because even if the business makes a profit, some might be reinvested. The problem for the business owners is that by selling shares, they could lose control of the business. So that's share capital. The other type was loan capital. Now this can include debentures, mortgages and venture capital. Debentures can only be used by limited companies, so it can be an alternative to issuing shares. Now they're long-term loans to a business that have a fixed interest rate and a set final payment date. But like I said, these are only for limited companies. If the company isn't limited, then mortgages are often used. A mortgage is like a long-term loan and generally uses the firm's property as security. So if the firm doesn't make the set repayments, the property can be taken. The final source of long-term finance we'll look at is venture capital. Venture capitalists provide money for high-risk businesses where other types of investors are unwilling to lend. They make their money by charging interest on the loans and by gaining shares in the business. OK, we've been through the different sources of finance. What I want you to do now is have a look at a few business situations and recommend the best sources of finance and explain why you've suggested them. Let's have a go. A firm wants to build a new factory costing £200 million. What is the best source of finance for this? If the firm is limited, it could issue shares. If not, a mortgage could be used. This is a large sum of money and will need a long-term source of finance as internal sources are likely to be insufficient. Here's some more. Have a go at these. Did you find this okay? Exam questions are likely to ask you to decide on sources of finance and analyse them. Or, if it's an evaluation question, you'll have to take this one step further and judge which methods are the most useful. But for both types of question, you're going to have to be able to talk about sources that are relevant to the business in your case study. Let's have a look at some exam questions so you can practise this. Before I give you the question, let me give you a bit of background to the company so you can apply your answer. Lisa's Limos PLC is a successful limousine hire firm wanting to expand to operate more limousines in more cities. Here's the question. Discuss how Lisa's Limos might raise the finance required for expansion. Pause and spend about 10 minutes on it. OK, had a go? Let's go through some of the key points. The question doesn't say how much money is needed, so as the business is successful, it could perhaps use profit. Now, this means the firm won't have to pay interest on the money. You should be pointing out that shareholders may not be happy about this, as they may not get their dividends. Can you see how these points already link to this business? This means the examiner can start awarding application marks and by showing the consequence of using profits, you can get analysis marks. Because it's a limited company, Lisa's limos could raise share capital and people may be willing to buy shares in the business because they're successful and the value of the shares may increase. This could be a good option if the business wants to raise a lot of money, but you need to point out that there may be an issue of the loss of control. The alternative to share capital would be loan capital. For this, you'll need to pick a source of finance like I did, making sure you link it to the question and try to analyse the suggestion. For example, you might want to suggest a loan so the business won't face a loss of control, but remember that interest charges will be faced. 
What you'd need to do next is judge which source is best, but point out that it depends on how much money is needed and how the business feels about paying loan charges or how they feel about a loss of control. If a question asks you to discuss something with a range of options like this question, I wouldn't discuss more than about three ideas. This will be enough to show the examiner that you understand the material and in the exam you won't have time to analyse more than this. Like with many evaluation questions, there's no right or wrong, but your suggestions need to be realistic. It's unlikely that an overdraft or trade credit would provide enough money to buy more limousines. Right, let's move on to the next section of accounting and finance and look at budgeting. We're going to look at what budgets are, advantages and disadvantages of them, and zero budgeting, and then we'll finish the section with variance analysis. So, what is a budget? All it is, is a target for a firm's costs or revenues. So, a production or expenditure budget looks at planned costs, and a sales revenue budget looks at planned revenue from selling products. It's really what a business thinks its costs and revenues will be. This leads on to one of the problems of setting budgets. They're set for the future, but a business doesn't definitely know what its sales revenue will be in the future. It estimates what it'll be, and of course, there are things that can affect the accuracy of sales revenue. For example, if a competitor brings out a new product, your sales revenue might fall. Another problem is setting a target for a budget that's too high, and staff think it's unachievable. They may end up demotivated, which will affect the budget in a negative way. On the other hand, setting a budget that's too easy can also be demotivating. So, there's a lot of skill involved in producing accurate budgets. So, if they're so difficult to set, why use them? Can you think of some reasons why firms set them? Have a go at noting down some ideas. Manage to note some down? Let's have a look together at the benefits of using a budget. Motivation. Staff may like the responsibility of sticking to their budgets and getting the recognition for doing this. This fits with Hertzberg's motivation theory. Improved coordination. Managers can ensure that staff are working toward meeting the firm's aims and that people in charge of budgets aren't overspending. Improved efficiency. Businesses can look back on their budgets and decide if they were accurate or not. If they're not, they can look at why and try and get it right for future budgets. This is something we'll look at a bit more when we go through the variance analysis. Delegation. Because pre-planned targets are in place, managers can delegate authority, knowing that subordinates have set targets to work to. This can free up their time and can be motivational for the employees. So these are the benefits, but you'll also need to mention the drawbacks of using budgets so you can write balanced answers for the examiner. So let's have a look at them. Predictions. Budgets, like we've said, are predictions of future costs and revenues. So if the actual results vary a lot, then the budget loses its usefulness and might demotivate staff. Poor decisions. Sticking to budgets too strictly may mean that poor decisions are made. For example, to keep costs down and within a budget, a firm might swap to a cheaper supplier. This will mean that the budget is stuck to, but it may also mean that product quality falls and customers will stop buying. This in turn will affect the sales revenue budget. Negotiating skill of budget setter. Some staff that set budgets may be able to argue very well for an increased budget. Let's say the marketing manager can argue a good case for a larger promotional budget. This might mean less money available for the human resources budget, which in turn could mean less training for staff and less efficiency. This last point is also a drawback of what's known as zero budgeting, which works by setting each budget at zero and getting managers to justify why they need a certain amount. The more persuasive managers will therefore end up with bigger budgets and leave those that really need increased budgets with problems. But zero budgeting is commonly used because it forces the budget holder to actively plan what they need and won't allow one department to have a bigger budget just because it always has had. So there's a benefit and a drawback of this. Before we look at variance analysis, 
Let's have a look at an exam question. We'll use the example of a business which has just taken on a new manager. This can be for a business of your choice. Just remember to relate your answer to the type of business. Here's the question. Analyse a benefit of delegating control of budgets to a new manager. Pause and only spend about six minutes on this question. How'd it go? Let's have a look at some of the points you might have covered. For this question, you need to show the examiner that you understand the topic, can apply your knowledge, and can analyse your work. There's no need for evaluation, because the highest skill you need to show is analysis. Now, you probably started off with a definition, which is good, because it'll show your understanding straight away and get you some content marks. What's key in this question is that you can think of a benefit of delegating control of budgets. In other words, letting someone lower down the hierarchy have control of them, and you can link this to a specific business situation and show the consequences of delegating the budget. In this case, the manager is new and delegating a budget may allow the new manager to get a better understanding of the business more quickly and be motivational. If he's more motivated, he'll most likely work harder to stick to the budget. For example, if it's a sales budget for the surfboard business, he might try and encourage sales staff to sell accessories when someone buys a surfboard. There are other advantages as well, like controlling spending, but the approach you take to the answer would be the same. You need to ask yourself how you can link your ideas to a business and what the consequences to the business will be.